Welcome. It's the 22nd of June, 2022. This is Google Summer of Code Git Cache Maintenance Project. Rusha Cash and Rashab, welcome. Let's get started. So Rishikesh, what topics would you like to like to bring up and let's let's go through them. Um, first thing I have again a, a failing test on Git plugin and Git uh, client plugin. Uh, okay. It's specific to a version of Java. So uh, oh, I tried debugging it, but uh, I couldn't. So yeah. Okay, well, so let's take a look at it. All right, so. And you say it's a failing test, consistently failing on ci.jenkins.io. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Okay, I don't see a failing test, but the job fails. Interesting. Okay, so let's get a look at. Okay, so the, the job failure is because... The agent died unexpectedly. So let's see if that's what it says. Oh, okay, yeah. In this case, it's saying, hey, its attempt to launch the Java 17 agent failed completely. Okay, so so the, the easy solution for you in those cases, close and reopen the pull request, and that will relaunch the job if you don't have um, a rerun option on the checks page of the of the GitHub uh, pull request page. Let's let's do a comparison here of what my page has on it and what your page has on it. So I'm going to share my screen. So on my page, so this is the pull request, and here, let's look at a let's look at a different pull request. So on my pull request page, for instance, with this one, we'll see in the checks tab, there is under ci.jenkins.io a rerun link. But I bet if you okay. check your page, you may not have that rerun link. Okay. Uh, no, no, I don't have it. Right. So, so the solution for you then, it's not a particularly attractive solution. I wish GitHub allowed us an, an easy way to let, uh, to grant a permission that would let you have the rerun flag, but not give you full merge permission, but they don't. So what you do is you close the pull request and reopen it immediately. Okay. I, I, I know that. I think the Git client plugin is, uh, uh, you know, running again. I'm not sure how. Uh, yeah, I just started. clicked. I clicked the rerun button. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So, and and Git client plugin should complete its testing quickly enough that before our hour ends today, we'll see the results here. So while while that's running, let me go grab a copy of your pull request. I'm going to start evaluating it here, here locally just to be sure that. Get client. Okay. Because I can usually get results very, very quickly. All right. So GHPR checkout. This one. Maven. Let's see. Just to be sure that I've got that. Okay. Good, so there's something to do. All right, so Maven clean. SD for count equals one C verify. Okay, so that can run in the background while we're while we're talking. Okay, uh, I've added the uh, maintenance commands in the Git client plugin, but I'm not able to use it in the Git client in the Git plugin. Okay, because of you know, that incremental thing, because the tests were failing, I couldn't try that. Can we uh, try that once? It's like absolutely, that, yeah. So let's yeah. let's well first let's let's get this 
this thing confirming that the tests are passing while it's running. Let me get it running on another location. And you should be able to use an incremental that's in your local repository. You can't push that because nobody else will have seen it. But we should be able to let you use an incremental, I thought anyway, that's locally available on the same front. It'll come from the same Maven, Maven cache where it writes everything else. But, but actually, tell you what, let's try that. What we're going to do is on this other computer here, we're going to do an incremental build of it, get the version number of that incremental, and then try to use that on the Git plugin. Okay. Uh, this is specific only to like my my thing, right? Like which I do, right? Correct, right. This would this would only let you do very short term development because as soon as you share it with somebody else, it would require that they had to have built the plugin as well, okay. and built the built the dependency as well. And you don't you don't want to put that on other people. So so this is just a a very short term stopgap while you're waiting for ci.jenkins.io to successfully build your pull request. Okay, so let's do this. Let's GHPR list, GHPR checkout, 862. Now I'm curious, can you hear in the background my granddaughter crying? No. No, no okay. I, I wasn't sure how my microphone did at, at retrieving the sound. We, we have grandbabies who are visiting my house and we're having a lot of fun. The two-year-old right now is a little tired and doesn't want to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see. GHPR checkout 862. Maven clean minus D skip tests. Verify install. Okay, so that, and now let's see. And the tests have passed. Good. Okay, so Java 11 tests passed. And the one that had a failure on ci.jenkins.io was Java 17. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm going to use Java 17 and do the same thing. I don't know any reason why tests would pass on 11 and fail on 17. We've not seen that. In this case, the I think the, whoops, interesting. Could not initialize class. Huh. Well, now that uh, is. I, I didn't add any new test, so just. In right, case. right, and and I know that this was running. So just a minute, let me. That's very interesting. Okay, so Java seventeen oh three. And admittedly, I've got a few cores on this computer, so it's it may just be that there's a problem with huh. ID is no. Very interesting. Is this the first time you're running uh, your client plugin on Java 17? I uh, actually I'm pretty sure that. If I look at Git client plug, if I look at its Jenkins file, it's running it every time. Here it is. Oh, 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 of course. I'm foolish. Um, right. So, well, no, wait a sec. In your palm.xml file, Jenkins.version is, oh, no, it's outdated. Okay. Git branch. Why is, wait a sec, why is Jenkins.version so badly outdated? I thought you had updated it to require a new version. Uh, that was only in, you know, the Git plugin. I didn't update <laughs> it. <in> the, <laughs> okay, uh, good, which is, which is fine. Your change doesn't require the newer, but 
But in order to yeah. use Java 17, I must tell it that I'm using a newer, a newer version of Jenkins. So this is where I should do it like this, 346, because tomorrow it will be 346.1. Okay, so now we're going to say maven clean minus D for count equals one C. Okay, sorry about that little uh, mistake on my part. Of course, I should remember that full Java 17 support in the tooling is not ready until at least Jenkins 2.342, I think it was. To, it, it took a while before we had full Java 17 tooling support. Okay, in my other example, I've built a an incremental. Now, how do I deploy the incremental? Is that already deployed, Rishika, or Rishab? Do you remember? Let's see, um, I, we should read the directions there. That's why we have documentation. Just a minute, Jenkins. Here we go. Incremental. So it is, uh, the build has been uh, completed right? on the. Okay, so I did a Maven at home, get Napier. No, this isn't telling me what I was. Oh, here we go. No. I wonder what that means. Okay. So I need to, I really want to deploy. Oh, oh, right. I just said it. Maven deploy. I want to deliver this to, um, to the repo.jenkins.io or repo.jenkins-ci.org. And, and I don't really want to run tests again. Skip tests. Now I should be able to, while we're doing this, I should be able to read this and it will tell me that Maven deploy was the thing that I wanted to do. No, okay, automatic deployment of commit incrementals. Yeah, so here it is said, it says, okay, If you had enough permissions, you could run this to pu push your latest mm -hmm. commits. Okay, that simple solution did not be right. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm, this is him describing. Okay, incrementalified, all right. So enabling incrementals, that's done. Create a pull request, wait for checks, obtain the, okay. So this is telling us how to do it with ci.jenkins.io. It's not telling me how to do it with a local push. Okay, so let's see if we can get it from ci.jenkins.io. CI of git client plugin, and we want the pull request that was most recently successful. Nope, that is currently running then. Nope, okay, so maybe it's the newest one. Oh, there it is, still running. Okay, good, all right. So we're still in process. Did we get a Java 17 machine running? We do. Okay, so we're waiting for Windows, the slow one. The other two have been successful and we unfortunately don't have artifacts yet. So we've still got to wait. Okay, so this is continuing. I still think, ah, yes, I have permission and I don't know if you do, Rushikesh, but I have permission to do a Maven deploy. And so what mm -hmm. I just did was I pushed this incremental up to maven.jenkins 
ci.org. I pushed it up to the repository. So because I pushed it, I should now be able to change to git-plugin and use that highlighted thing. Can you, can you read that text? Yeah. Is that a little better? Okay. Yes. Sir. So now if I go to git plugin, let's see the list of pull requests. We'll check out this one. Uh, well, we'll check out that one. Okay, now. Okay, good. Git dash client. Okay, so here it is. And we're going to say version. Ah, I've lost it from my copy buffer. Where'd it go? Here it is. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so that worked. At least this far, it worked. Mm -hmm. So Hrushikesh, even if the CI job fails, we now have enough that you can use the Git client plugin differences. So what was, let's grab an API method from invalid object name fatal. Hmm. Just a minute. Hmm. So what is this saying? No pointer. Oh, oh. Okay. There is a problem here. And the problem is that the tests are written badly. They should not depend on a well-known file name in a public directory. Slash temp slash dot git is not a place to do put things. Now, I don't know why it does that. So that'll need some investigation. But whoever in the tests is writing to slash temp slash dot git, that's fundamentally not allowed. Nope, it's still got something. Going. Oh, no, wait a sec. There was this other th mistake I was making, wasn't it? Minus D Jenkins dot version equals 2.346, like that. Okay, so that's running. And this thing ran to conclusion and now I've got to get plug in. And I get client plug in. So would it help if we prove that those versions are working or who should cache is this already enough? I think this is enough. Uh, I've written the maintenance command, but I don't think we can use it in the Git plugin. Like we have to access the Git client and then use it. So I think well, this but, is enough. For, yeah. 
I mean, could we could we do something like make a call to it, even if the call is never exercised? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so there is a a method maintenance on Git client. Yeah, so if we were to make a reference, even if we make a reference to um, Git client dot maintenance in it, something it that's never called, it should, it will either fail the compilation, which says we made some, I made some mistake, or it will pass compilation. Yeah. Okay. So if let's... you do it to the, you know, get, uh, you know, this uh, CLI get uh, a thing, no, uh, like the class, then you can even run the maintenance command because I added the code for that. Okay, well, so let's let's try this. So I need something that uses Git client. And yeah, let's look inside Git SCM and see what's there. You should have an instance of uh, the Git client initiated somewhere. Uh, the checkout method. Exactly. So, so I've got to create somebody must be returning or dealing with a Git client like this one. Yes. Right. So I've got a Git client there, and if I said Git dot maintenance, uh, GC? mad. No, oh, no. G you're going to yeah, make it GC. real. Yeah. I was going yeah, to say yeah. something rubbish. You're going <laughs> to make it real. That's even better. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so so now we're going to make it real and do a compile. Now this certainly will not be happy to run, but we don't care about running right now, right? Skip tests and let's do a verify. Okay, so that was successful, which tells us that we were able to reference git.maintenance. Because- uh, do, do I need to uh, update the version every time I send a, send a, you know, when I push my code to the git client plugin? Do you need to update the version? Not sure what you mean. Like the pom.xml file made, do I uh, need to update the Git client plugins version every time I push it? Like in the Git if, client if there is an imp if there is a relevant change in the Git client plugin um, pull request that you're that's being evaluated, then you want to update to that. If you if it's if the change you made was cosmetic or not relevant to the thing you're working, you don't have to increment. You don't have to change this version number. Okay. Does, did that answer your question, Hushikesh? Yes, I'm not yes, sure that yes. did. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push this to your branch so that you've got an example, if that's okay. Yeah. And if you would be willing, would you, could you try uh, incremental get client build? Could you try downloading this while we're on the call together here and try to compile Git plugin off of your development branch, off of your branch Jenkins-13493 and I hope it will just compile for you directly because the this incremental version that I pushed uh, is visit should be visible to you from repo.jenkinsci.org. So you want me to compile it, right? Exact. Do a git pull and then do a okay. Maven clean verify or a Maven clean minus D skip test verify. Yes. Um, 
Okay, it's 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 yeah, it's running the project. Good. All right. And it looks like the Git client draft pull request has also completed successfully. So we can then have you, once you've confirmed it builds with the change I made, then we can have you switch to use the, 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 the incremental build from ci.jenkins.io. Okay. That gives you practice in doing exactly the same set of steps. And has the compile succeeded? No, it's taking some time. Yeah, I'm not sure how, how long will it take. So. What is the yeah is yeah the... Uh, yeah it's it's successful yeah. Yay! Okay, mm -hmm. now now you need to do the next step, which is open up the pull request. I'll paste a link to the pull request mm -hmm. CI job, and we'll have you download. Let's see, where is the chat window? Here it is. Okay, so here's the CI job, and on that page, you'll find five different artifacts listed, uh, four, three jar files, an HPI, and a palm. You want to yeah. grab the, basically what I do is I copy the URL of the HPI file, paste it, and then throw the things away that aren't specific to the version number. Uh, now I need the version, right? You, you do, that's correct. And so the version number here is three dot eleven dot one dash rc three zero seven nine dot long string of numbers and letters and underscores I now have to paste this version right yeah, so you put that into the palm.xml file of the Git plugin. Okay, yeah, I added the version. And now I have to, again, no. Now what do I do now? I directly build it. Uh, correct. So you modify the palm.xml file, build it again. We know that it succeeded with the incremental that I did. 
all you're doing is changing to use the incremental that ci.jenkins.io did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the build ran successfully. Good. Okay, so commit it and push it. And now I have to commit and push this. I'm sorry. Now you what? And now I have to push this. Push this uh, change. It would be good if you push it because that way you know that you're working on an incremental. Okay. No reason to lose track of the information you just learned. Let's hide it. Let's hide it. Let's put it inside the plugin. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, I pushed it. Great. Okay. So this I have to keep doing it whenever I do any changes related to the maintenance in the Git client plugin, right? Right. If you have to update, if you need a new API from the Git client plugin, you'll have to change that. Or if you made a significant change to the content, to the implementation, you'll need to change that in the Git okay. plugin. Wait one minute. I tried building the project and then it shows you know could not resolve dependency for the project sorry you say it shows an unresolved dependency yeah yeah Did I okay so that language? that may mean that you've got some slight syntax error in the the version number that you copied and pasted Maybe. okay I, I i'll check that out once again well and this is a good time to to check it now let's don't let's not delay because we want to be okay. sure that you're able to successfully use incremental builds um uh, meanwhile Rishikesh is doing that mark i had a question um if uh, uh, is it possible for me to have uh, two controllers uh, for a jenkins instance uh, for a particular jenkins instance is it possible for me to have two controllers and multiple agents when you say two controllers and multiple agents, you mean something like a high availability setup where you'd have? Yes, yes. Yeah. In a distributed environment, can I have uh, separate instances of controllers running in separate machines, but for the same, uh, for the same Jenkins ecosystem? No. So That's Jenkins doesn't have, doesn't have a, a way to do concurrent execution. You can do, you can do rapid failover where you store the Jenkins home directory to a shared file system, uh, to a shared high availability file system. And then when, when server A dies, you switch to server B, but you have to start server B after the death of server A. Did, did that answer your question, Rishab? Yes, so it, it, the case is always going to be that I'll have one control instance and multiple agents. Correct. That is correct. Mm -hmm. You will you will have one controller 
and zero or more agents. And, and we hope that every user will have at least one agent, but zero or more agents for sure. Oh, oh, uh, uh, the error which I get here is the failure was cached in the local repository and resolution was not reattempted. Right, and that, that says that, so let's try that. Let me get, a. okay, so let me get the same thing on mine. Let's see, am I sharing my screen still? Yeah. Okay, good. So let's, I'm going to try the edit here. Copy link address. Mm -hmm. I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff to get down to just the version number. Oh, interesting. That is the exact version number that's stored there. Huh. So you got the exactly correct version number for Ushikesh. I don't know why it's not working. Interesting. Well, let's find out why not. So uh, typically in the logs, we would see Maven pulling it from the repository thing. So I guess uh, Rishikesh can check if uh, this particular jar is being pulled from the Jenkins.ca.org. Well, but, but what we see is the job was successful, at least on my screen, I see that the job was successful. Uh, maybe we need to read the build log because there, there are conditions under which for instance, if it's not up to date with the master branch, it may quietly refuse to push a copy to the repository. Let's see if it tells us that. Skipping deployment as no artifacts were found, typically due to a PR bilge not up to date with its base branch. Okay, so. All right, so we're gonna update this with the, oh no, that's interesting. So Hrushikesh, when you did your, um, your build on the Git client, your base branch was quite a bit out of date. Oh, okay. So let's do a Git push. So we'll need to wait another 15 minutes or so. So Hrushikesh, your, your build cannot work yet uh, because the, um, okay, so git revert. Incremental build is not available yet. Not available because the base, the, um, the, Pull request branch did not include the full contents of the master branch. New build coming soon. Okay, so that now should let us So we want to see 1277. And the checks are running. Okay, so here we see that the, the checks of PR job 1277 are running. So 15 or 20 minutes from now, we'll have an incremental and it will publish. So Rushikesh, what was happening is we can read it in the, the log here for the job. It says in build number 26, oh, no, wrong one, sorry. We need to look at 
Git client plugin. And here in pull request 862, if we look at the preceding job and its console output, what we'll see is it says skipping deployment as no artifacts were found with the expected path. So what, what that's telling us is, hey, we are not up to date with the base branch. And so I made that change, pushed it, and now it's building here in number five. Okay. Sorry to have taken 40 minutes on this topic. Are there other other topics that are important to you, Rishikesh? Yeah, so basically uh, about the locks, I'm not able to add locks to the caches because I don't have the you know URL of the string. The concurrent hash maps uh, uh, takes URL as the key and the lock as the value. So if a repository doesn't have if the repository is not present in the uh, hash map, the uh, the cache is added to the uh, hash map and then it's logged. So is there a way to, you know, get the URL so that I can add it? I, th I think, well, okay, so let's, let's, let's take a look at that together. It's abstract git SCM source, right? Yeah. I even added the code to get all the, uh, you know, caches on the controller. So I need a way to, you know, add lock to it. So, so since you've done that, I think we can use that as the basis, can't we? So let's, let's go looking. So, whoops, let's use a way to, that I can see the differences. So have you pushed your, ch any changes to the, uh, Okay, so bunch of new imports, okay, bunch of moved imports. All right, get caches dir. Okay. Ah, okay, so you haven't yet provided, you haven't yet pushed anything that, that iterates over the, over the list of caches. Oh, uh, that I added the way, uh, you know, because I, I just needed a list of, uh, you know, caches so that I'll iterate it, you know, in the task executor class where everything, where I create a new thread and iterate through them and run the maintenance tasks. Okay. So, so the idea then here is somewhere in this, you will, you will send back to the caller a list of directories that are the cache yeah is that right okay yes. all right and and then what you're saying is you need a way to request a lock of that cache yeah. couldn't we just add a locking method that takes the takes the lock based on the directory or given the directory then inside abstract git scm source change in, into that directory and make a git remote call to figure out which what the url is of the remote oh can you repeat once again yeah so so the idea is okay we need we're you're going to you're going to call a method on abstract git scm source that returns to you the list of caches or yeah. list of cache directories, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, does it? Why? Why not? Okay. So could could it return to you instead of a list of cache directories? Could it return to you a list of of um, repository remote repository URLs that then you use that as the argument to the locking and it will figure out where the, what the directory name is. So keep the knowledge of what the directory name of the cache is entirely inside abstract get SCM source. But then I need the URL. So I'm not getting away, you know, to get the URL. Right. And so let's, what if, what if the URL were the thing you returned to the, to the, to the caller so okay so 
I, I had I had initially thought, oh, let's give the directory to the caller and let them iterate on. But in order for someone to, in order for you to lock the cache directory, as you said, you need the URL of the of the remote for that cache directory, right? Yeah. Okay, so remote. Let's find a cache method. Okay, so it used cache locks, cache locks. Okay, so here we've got a cache lock and it uses this thing called a cache entry. So my thinking is we ought to return cache entries, the list of all possible cache entries to you as a caller. And now how do we get the list of all possible cache entries? Cache locks, okay, so. Okay. All right, so get the cache directory. It says we've got a cache entry and it's going to attempt, okay. So oh no, no, wait a sec. Okay, here cache entry in this case for sure cache is not a remote URL. It's being used as one element of a file. So this is the name of a directory no, in caches, I right? Yeah, actually, if you call there's a method, like if you search for cache entries, there's a method which converts the URL into a hash. Okay, so it's it, it uses an MD5 hash, which converts the URL into this cache entry. Ah, got so, it. Okay. So what you're saying is get cache entry. This method takes a remote and create and uses this to create the hash for it. Hash, yeah. Okay, all right, so, so get cache. And so if we... I thought we could reverse engineer, like, you know, use the hash to get the URL, but then that MD5 is like a one-way algorithm. You can't go right, back. Right, right. And, and we certainly don't, I, I don't see any reason why we would want to try to turn turn that hash code back into a remote. Why not just, okay, but the, the list of remotes must be somewhere, right? But uh, if we look at how uh, in abstract data assume source is initializing this cache entry, you'll see it's, it's trying to access the get remote function uh, on 9183. And get remote function is this method is, a, is an abstract method which places the uh, responsibility on the implementation to get this remote URL. So under my so my impression was that you could as a caller could have one remote URL per one SCM, right? So actually could have multiple per SCM. So, but, a, but an instance of an SCM would have one at any particular given time would have one remote URL. And if that is true, then you can't have all of the list of remote URLs from the SCM itself. And that is what you're trying to do right now. So Rishabh, I'm not quite understanding. So you're you're saying that say that again, why why would you think that the the list of remote the list of remotes is not accessible? Uh, because um, abstract get SCM source, uh, first of all, one of the reasons why I think is that abstract get SCM source is providing a contract there, it says get remote. And what we see, there is not a list of URLs for us to possibly get. It's just one name that we can get. The implementer can implement how they want to get that, right? They haven't themselves given the option for us to uh, uh, in, within the context of abstract data source, you don't have the name of those remote, remote URLs. 
the implementation of abstract data SEM source would have it or have the custom logic to get that. But I don't see it as a the, the methods um, signature doesn't give me the impression that you can have a list of URLs there. Or you can get the list of remote URLs. Hmm. And when I when it start to think about it to my limited understanding, fundamentally abstract any git git SEM instance or any SEM instance, uh, if we initialize one would be initialized upon a single repository at a single time, right? It won't be running on multiple repositories, a single git SE instance. It would check out, for an example, it would check out one repository and do the work, and then we would have another one for another repository. So the relationship between a remote URL and a git SEM is one to one, not one to many, right? And that I certainly agree with the the relationship between a remote URL and a cache directory is it should be one to one, right? If there is, if we've taken in a remote, then it should have that that name plus its hash should give us that directory. I'm just not, okay, I'm not. I'm not getting it. Why can't we just remember the remotes? Remember the association between remote and remote and um, cache, cache entry and return the list of remotes, if that helps, or the list of cache entries. Help, help me understand, Rishab. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm missing there. I, I mean, um, so I remember that in Git2 Chooser, where we actually make a decision based on a cache, uh, what we were doing was that we had, we always had the remote name, and based right. on that remote name, we were able to get the exact cache entry that we wanted. and we could work upon that but right now when we say that we want all of the entries we can get all of the entries but we want the remote url and from what i understand is that from the design perspective uh, the implementer is supposed to know about the remote url it's not the abstract git sem source that is what is my assumption here well, and, well, is, and oh go ahead no, no. If that is the case, then I, I don't see how how we could get it at that level. I agree with you. In the current implementation, the the abstract Git SCM source it receives receives the the remote as an argument as it's constructing that cache, and then it relies on the caller to continue passing in that remote. But why can't we? record the association between remote and directory and add a new method to abstract get SCM source that will let us return the list of all remotes that are cached. I agree. I, uh, there should be, principally, there should be a way to do this. Yes. We should have this information. I mean, it just seems like if, let's see, what's an example? I mean, one concept might be on startup of abstract get SCM source. It so during object construction or during or as a static initializer in abstract get SCM source, it could iterate over the caches directory looking for existing caches. And and then we've got the list of caches and it can look inside each cache and ask for the remotes for that the remote for that cache and then we have an association between cache directories we have a list of cache directories and their corresponding remote hmm. so rushikesh excuse rishab and my going going through this have 
it, it may be simplest if let's see let's try a let's try it and okay we've got to have some place in this where it does a a create of the cache directory right that's this thing right here on my screen where it's creating the cache directory if it doesn't exist so what if we were to create a data structure something like a, a list or no let's do a map of string and could it be a git remote what does get remote return another string yeah it returns it returns it. oh yes okay so String object ID. There we go. So okay. The, the whole point of me asking the URL is so that you know I can add the cache into the you know you know i can add that cache into that concurrent hash map and lock it so that whenever any other plugin tries to access it they don't have access to it that's the whole point of it so why is it necessary for you to have the remote url as the key for the hash map so that uh, that thing gets converted to a cache entry and all the other plugins also use you know cache entry as the key so if we don't use the same key then there may be problems, right? Right. Yeah, well, so isn't, I don't know that we, okay, just, I think, just thinking about this, that all we need is a list, is a list of strings that are the remotes, right? Mm -hmm. Or call them cached remotes. Isn't that already enough to, and then what we do is every time we, every time we, we see a request to, to access a cache, we look it up somehow and add, okay, at this point it's doing a cache entry. So conceptually, okay, it would be something like, hey, um, ooh, what? there is a data structure that allows only one of a thing. Set. Ah, set, oh, thank you. Very good, thank you. And hash is set. It a hash set, okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much, good. All right, so then if, cached remotes, well, let's see, do we say that something like if cached remotes there's probably even a method on a on a set that will let me just add it if it's not already there. This is the idea I was thinking if we just add and cache entry is a bad choice, but doing it right now because it's available. So now cached remotes has the cache entry, or if we were to do it at a higher level, it would conceptually have the remote. So let's add, a, add the list of remotes, and then we create an access method that can read that list of remotes. And now you've got, as a consumer, you've got the list of remotes and you can then ask to iterate over each of those remotes. Uh, but then, uh, one minute. so if anything is added to the cache remotes, that isn't that like, isn't it like, a, isn't it like, you know, some other plugin is using it? 
I, I, some of when you say some other plugin is using it, you mean you think that there are other things that are accessing the cache without acquiring a lock? Oh, like no, like one minute. Is there's a method called like get cached lock, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So there's get cache lock, right? There's this thing right here, right? Get so cache. Let's go find the implementation just a minute. Yeah, this one, is, that's what you're referring, right? Yeah, uh, whenever I add a cache entry, isn't this like, you know, to get, whenever I create a new cache on the Jenkins controller, then only it would be added or would it be added like when I get any of the caches, like which are already present, those caches also can I, uh, will those also be added into the cache remotes? That's what I'm. So I think we want all of them to be done now, to, to be added, but isn't there, okay, so here, for instance, is do retrieve. So it's going to do a retrieve of, it's going to use command line git to add credentials, create the repository, fetch and prune. So this is doing a git fetch and a git prune, or it's doing, doing a git fetch with that, that's now created a cache entry. And I would think what we want to do is take, where is this? This may actually be the kind of level where we want it. So cache entry. Okay, what now I'm not sure I understand this. Where is the URL? Oh, this is relying on it already existing. Is that correct? When I read this, it yes. looks like it's it's assuming it's, yeah, it's doing the fetch without having, well, no, is it? If you look at the method called get cache entry, that method is going to be invoke get remote. You say get cache entry. And it uses get remote. Yes. And if you see what get remote does, it's. Yeah, and get remote you... is the, is an abstract. I, I tried printing, you know, uh, the what do you tell, concurrent hash map, thinking I'll get something in it, but that always returns an empty object. So that, uh, so uh, like, I feel whenever a plugin is using it, it, it adds the, you know, a cache entry into the uh, concurrent hash map, and then it adds the lock to it until and unless any other plugin is not using it. I don't think anything is going to be added to the concurrent hash map. Yeah, but isn't, don't we have the place we need? We have one of the places we need right here, cached remotes. If something calls get cache entry. But then the question is, is this, will this be called when an actual operation is applied by a user or is this called at the level of initialization and on all of the repositories so that you will, would have all of the remotes? And I would think, I think we want both, right? I think during, during initialization of this class, we want it to check the disk once at least for all existing caches. And then any call to get cache entry, if it's not already in the cache, we want it added to the cache or added to the list of cached remotes. So do retrieve would not be called for all of the list of the repositories that already exist within the cache when git plugin is initialized or would it be sorry add 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 ask say that again i'm saying do retrieve is the function that is actually calling this method okay cache entry what I'm trying to think is, is do retrieve being, when is do retrieve being called? 
Well, it's I, I just yeah. I'm not sure I understand why the answer. I don't know the answer, but I'm not sure why the answer would be would would be particularly particularly crucial, right? Any access, any access to any access to the cash has to go through this get cash entry, doesn't it? It's got to convert a a remote into a cash entry. And so if we record it here, isn't that already a good way to know, oh, here's a here's another somebody requests a a, a, a cached a cache directory. Oh, and now I think we need a way of, you know, adding all the existing caches into the hash set. And that I agree. And so, so for that, I think what we need is, and this, I may, what I'm doing here may be cheating because I'm returning a list or a, a set that may expose internal representation. So consider ignoring it for now, then I think we need some form of static method that iterate over the caches directory, assigning remotes or reading the remote reading the git remote urls and assigning adding them to the cached remotes list so that's that's the idea i had is so when the class is initialized it does that little bit of work to walk over each of the repositories in the caches directory extract their cached remotes and put them into this set. And then if there's ever an access on, when access through get cache entry happens, it also doesn't add. And whenever I try running the maintenance task, I can just iterate through these cache remotes. And you know, get the add the lock to it, and then run the cash uh, get maintenance on it. That was my thinking, anyway. Is if we just said, okay, let's let's remember the list of cached remotes, and okay, when we start up, we have to iterate over all the directories, and then anytime there's a request to look at that somebody passed us a remote and we can remember that one just to be sure that hey if the remote wasn't already known we want to make sure it's known now does that seem sensible rishab rishikesh I'm thinking of cases. Rishab, I think you had some specific concerns, and I'm not sure that this idea has addressed your concerns at all. No, um, yeah, because I, I guess I need to run the instead and see how this is. That is one of the easiest way to understand. Um, so the way, uh, if you look at the line one two five two. The way we use the cache entry to create a new file. What is the relationship between a cache entry and the list is and a cache directory? So the line number again was one two five three. One two five three. One two five three. It may be offset by my modifying. Yes. So it's it's this one. Okay. So, so it's Ah, good. Okay. All right. So, and your question was, what's the relationship between a remote and a cache entry? No, that, 
So we saw, right? That I saw. I am saying that when, when it's creating a new file here, it's getting the root directory. And the root directory caches folder would have the list of all of the caches, uh, list of all of the caches, right? Right. This directory, jenkins.rooter slash caches, contains all of the caches, as far as I understand. And then we, oh, okay, we specify a child of that. So we get this specific directory for that cache directory. So, and let's say I can't get the remote list of remotes uh, from the system, and I have the list of directories, uh, caches. I have access to that. Can I can I get the remote name on the basis of that information? You certainly, we can get the remote name. If we can get to this parent directory, then all we need to do is iterate over each directory, change into that directory and call git remote minus V. Yes, that means we depend on the content. So we need to search. We don't need to search for the contents. We actually do like if we are going inside, we are iterating through the list and then getting it each directory. Yeah, I was I was thinking that is how we would do because I, I thought that if it's not possible for us to get out of the list of remotes at this level, then that is how we would do it. But I guess what you're doing uh, should give us the list of remotes. So it's going to be an exercise for me, Mark. I, I mean, I uh, theoretically, uh, I, I think I have a doubt here and probably if I run the instance, I'll be able to see if you know how abstract it is seems so it's actually doing this. Oh, I, I think we wouldn't need the URLs anymore if we get, you know, all the cached remotes in that hash set. Because once we have the cached uh, entries, like the cache remotes contains all the cache entries, right? So once we have all the cache entries, we can just iterate over because we can just iterate over them, get the file directory get the lock, add the lock, run the maintenance task, unlock it, and go to the next cache. Got it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Hmm. But my question is still on there. How to get that, how to get the list of cache entries, right? Well, but, and that's where I think that the cache entry is a derive a value derived from the list of remotes, isn't it? And since it's derived yes. from the list of remotes, we could either make the interface use, we, it could either use remotes as it's doing right now, right? It's locking is all based on remotes, Rusha Cache. I think that's what you said, is the locks here are, cache entries are computed from a remote and callers interface with this through a remote. So if we, oh, go ahead. I have a way. So like, can we do it like this? Can't we read the cache directory, like cache directory, like in the Jenkins or get root cache directory? And then, it, uh, it, uh, you know, read all the, you know, read all the directories present in it. And, you know, uh, split the, uh, split the folder, like the folder name, uh, the, it, it's appended using get dot uh, get dash and then some hash okay so if we get that hash and then add that hash into the hash set can't we do that we could but how is that any better than just using i mean yes we could we could the cache entry is the directory name right this cache entry is the name of that directory so if we're willing to allow access to, if we're willing, for instance, to allow the acquisition of a lock based on cache entry, in addition to being based on remote, yeah, that would work just fine because then we just use the cache entries. So if, if there were another, let's say there were another get cache lock method that instead of taking a string cache entry, it took a file. And when it takes a file, the thing we pass is the directory. Mm. 
wouldn't that give the effect that you're describing and then and you or any any caller can can iterate over the list of of directories in the caches folder and those are the keys to be used now that's that's putting knowledge about the caches contents outside of this abstract get scm source class but i think i think that could work as well couldn't it oh, wait how, how are we putting that outside the uh, knowledge of this class like can you explain that part so so my thought was um if we if if you're uncomfortable using the concept of cached remotes this idea we could also in we could instead of using cached remotes we could return a list of all the all the cache entries that's basically the list of directory names in the caches folder and then add a add some way to allow this method get cache lock based on cache entry to be accessed from outside the class we can add a method in this class itself like i already added a method which gets all the you know uh detail all the caches present on this on the jenkins controller okay and you know you so using that one we get all the caches and then with that i think we can uh, create a new method to pass the file i think that that would work so mark uh, the thing that you worried about uh, isn't that already possible for me if i have the singleton jenkins instance and if i can access uh, a folder called caches uh, by calling a method from that instance then i can um essentially reverse engineer the list of uh, cache entries right yes yes you can absolutely have the directory name yeah. yes yeah so so it's 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 not that this is a security thing i was just worried about an an in cap an information in caps information hiding thing but i think absolutely if if it's easier to access this thing as directories and and pass the cache entry into this method say i'd like to lock based on cache entry yeah now that's that's a little complicated because the get cache lock method right well no actually it's not because it's exactly using a cache entry yeah so it, we we could just have a way of iterating over cache entries return a list of cache entries and then rishikesh iterates over the cache entries from the from the maintenance object and says this cache entry get the lock perform the maintenance then this one get the lock perform the maintenance so rishikesh are you okay with that idea i think using the cache entry a list of cache entries it looks great with me yeah yeah we can create a list of cache entries in this class itself and then you know it iteration of the cache entries would be happening in the git maintenance yeah that's what i was thinking is yeah. is this thing instead of having a set of strings like i'd roughed in their cache remotes it's just cache entries right something like that and and that cache entries is the set of all all available cache entries on this thing and that could be generated generated at startup by reading the directory contents and then maintained based on accesses yeah why not uh, but mark i think uh, if we think about the choice between providing the list of remotes and list of entries i believe providing the list of remotes is 
what we should do because the user should not be concerned the user of an abstract kit scm should be concerned with the remote url and cache entry is an internal system detail that it doesn't need to be concerned with and and i'm i'm fine with that logic as well that 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 would work just as well for me either in either case we're creating a list a set of something and then the the caller the maintenance task uses that list of something and walks through the list acquiring a lock for each entry in the list performing the maintenance task and acquiring a lock performing the maintenance test either one is fine with me i i think you're right it could it could be the thing that we store in this list in this set could be the remote or it could be the cache entry and and i i think you're right that remote is the one that's currently used as the external interface rushikesh i think that's what you had told us as well right is remote yes, yes. is the external interface so that but that just means store the remote we have to read the remote value at a slightly different place in this file Uh, getting to remotes, I think, would be a, a difficult task, like because we'll be using the okay, client plugin again. Okay, yeah, and and that's why I don't object to declaring that there is a there is an abstract there is a a concept here called a cache entry, and that concept is to be treated as opaque by the caller. You, you receive a cache entry back as the maintenance task and the cache entry, you don't know what the meaning of the thing is. You don't know that it's a directory and we're not gonna tell you that it's a directory. It's just a cache entry. And, and so in that sense, I think that's as, that is as obfuscated or as, as, as effective information hiding almost as the remote URL. Rishab, what do you think of my logic? Does that sound fair? That um, yes, Mark, I, I, I believe it does because if you think more about a cache entry and the remote name, both are interchangeable in some sense. If you know what how the cache entry is being made, anyone could go and see how it is being made at abstract data stream source. So those two definitions, essentially, those two entities are same in terms of their value and since abstract data SEM source does provide um, an explicit method to get the cache entry based on the remote URL then it is also willing to expose that concept to the user so I don't see a problem providing a list of cache entries instead of a single one based on the remote URL Okay, so then, then Rushikesh, you've got, you've got me and Rishab both who say using cache entries as a list is fine. That's great. Go for it. Thank, thanks for your patience here. I apologize. I'm getting a little weary here. It's, it's a, getting late my time. Anything mm -hmm. else we need to review before I go to sleep? Um... I have few more questions, but I think it'll take a lot of time. So we can uh, schedule a meet again, like so it's getting late for you. So, so if 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 another meeting is later this week, I, on a Saturday, like we had it last time. Yeah, that so that will be that that may be just as every bit as daunting. How about we try to get through your questions here and see if we can. We can resolve them before I get too too out of it, and oh. and then then if we still need to meet over the weekend, we can. Oh, I think I okay. I'll not take much time. I'll ask like the most important ones, like uh, about task listener. Like what exactly? Like the Git client plugin takes in a task listener. Okay. Uh, I I is is a task listener similar to a, a you know reading on writing a log file. It, it is, but it's a, a log file. It's a log in, in a context of a specific activity. So, so here, if we look at the Java doc. Okay, so, 
So a task list listener is a way of recording things that are going on and take, expected to take some time. And those things include a build, right? Or an SCM checkout or the launch of an agent. And so what this is, is this is a narrow scoped log for a specific activity. How, how would I be using this? Like, how would it be helpful? Like, well, so a build log, for instance, is is a specific task listener. And so when when a build is running inside a Jenkins job, the way the Git client records the progress of its operations is by writing to a task listener. And so okay. you might you might choose to use a task listener for each of the maintenance tasks. And that way then you have a facility if you need it to display the log of maintenance operations to the user. Okay. So that would be helpful in the second phase of the coding uh, period where Could I be. have to display. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, because maintenance operations seem like they fit really well with the description here. They are lengthy operations that has a chance of failure. There could be a, a concurrency problem. There could be a data corruption problem in a cache. And so, so we'll want, so I think a, a task listener is a good choice of a way to record what the, how the, how the maintenance task is proceeding. Okay. Uh, all other questions I think can be answered another time that they are all um, like not related to what I would be doing this week. So I think that's, that's fine. Okay. All right. Thanks Rishikesh. Thanks Rishab. Anything else we need to discuss then? That's it. Thank you. From my side. All right. So I am going to go get some sleep. The recording won't be posted until at least 12 hours from now, because I've, I, I, I won't even look at it for at least eight or 10. All right. Thanks, everybody. Let's see. Stop the recording.